Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm here in my new kitchen. Um, I thought I'd just make a quick video showing you. Um, I'm in the process of taking photos for my new cookbook, which will be out October of 2021. Um, the thing I wanted to show you today, I'm making a quick dish of um, Chinese style lo mein. Um, so this is different from the, um, sorry, this is my uh, fridge overflow out here because it's uh, my regular fridge is too full of stuff. Um, lo mein uh, done Chinese style, so not like the saucy, not the stir fry dish that you get in the US, but more a sort of simple sauced noodle dish. Um, this one is based off of um, what the folks, uh, Chris and Steph at Chinese Cooking Demystified, they have a great lo mein video which you should watch. Um, they, they show a, a technique for cooking uh, lo mein with um, oyster sauce and lard. Um, and it's delicious, but it requires that you have lard on hand. And considering this uh, is meant to be like a super fast and simple recipe that you can do with pan sort of pantry ingredients, um, rendering, your, rendering my own lard, which you know sometimes I have, but often I don't, usually I don't, um, seemed like it would be nice to find an alternative for that. So I tried a number of things like oil, sesame oil, olive oil, um, and then I thought, hey, what about just butter? I always have butter on hand and buttered noodles are great. Um, so I tried combining butter and oyster sauce um, and tossing some uh, simple wonton noodles with it and some greens and it turns out it's delicious. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> so this is just a few baby bok choy leaves I got here. Got some water going in my wok. Um, I'm going to be taking some, some photos as I go by the way so you can kind of see what I do um, for my photo shoot days. I can kind of talk you through that process. Um, in the kitchen I got these two things. I, well actually I got three lights set up. So I got um, the the flash on my camera um, which is a 5D Mark II, an older camera that I've been using for the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. Um, I got this big flash set up here and I got a sort of secondary light and it's all triggered off of this one flash on this camera. Um, so and this, is, uh, this lens is a 100 millimeter prime. Um, that means it doesn't, you know, you can't zoom in and out with it. It is what it is. Um, and generally with photographs, um, prime lenses um, will give you better picture quality than, than telephoto lenses and zoom lenses. Um, okay, so I got my greens um, in here. I'm doing a lot of photo shoots right now. <laughs> All these boxes are going to go to uh, the local COVID. Those are yesterday's photo shoot going to the COVID ward. I'm going to drop them off later today. Tomorrow they'll be getting a new set of boxes, etc. Um, but full, my fridge is a bit full right now from photo shoots. Um, All right. These are wonton noodles, which are basically egg, very thin cut egg noodles. So not, not extruded, not stretched, not rolled. They're cut, so they got a kind of square... Um, cross section. Just going to get those in there. We'll get our greens in there as well. And then where are my big long cooking chopsticks? Here they are. I'll show, I'll, maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll take some pictures as I'll go and then I'll also I'll pop those pictures up on screen so you can see kind of what they look like. I don't know if these are the actual pictures I'm going to end up using in my book because I'm kind of distracted by the whole video element right now, but um, it might, might, might be alright. I actually got plenty of pictures of um, cooking noodles already, so I might not need to use these. Um, what I did want to get pictures of is the whole butter and oyster sauce setup, which I'm going to show you in a second. All right, now I need to get a spider. It's one of these guys. I get a little bowl. So I have all these bowls set up for, um, for photo shoot stuff. This is not normally how my kitchen would be set up. Okay. Get everything out. Um, and that's so normally what you would do is you would quickly shock these noodles under um, cold running water, which is actually what I'm going to do just to stop the cooking. I 
Okay. Um, and now normally what, what you would do if you watch Chris and Steph's video, what they show you is that after you've shocked them, then you dip them in the hot water real quick, just for about 10 seconds, just to kind of keep them warm. That way, when you toss them with the sauce later, um, they're still nice and warm. Um, I'm doing a slightly different method because in my version, um, I'm gonna make a sort of quick emulsified pan sauce right in the wok. So this is gonna go back over heat. This is a brand new stove and the clicker is already broken, so I have to use that thing. Back over the heat, this is uh, chicken stock. Um, I have this leftover from poaching some chicken for a sesame noodle salad I made yesterday. So a little bit of chicken stock, a couple tablespoons. I'll do a couple tablespoons of butter. So you kind of think of this as like buttered noodles with like cheese, you know, cheese and butter. But instead of the umami that you get from the cheese, you're gonna get some umami from the oyster sauce um, over here. This is my temporary pantry bookshelf that I've just temporarily converted. Um, I plan on either building in shelves or maybe buying shelves. Um, so this whole area will be pantry storage. Um, over there, those tall pantries, I, I, I haven't put them in yet, but those old pull-out, you know, the pull-out shelves that I had in my old kitchen, the Reva shelf things, this is gonna be filled with those. So all of these will be pull-out pantries that pull out. Um, so I, th I think this kitchen will end up being quite functional. So we're just gonna let this reduce down a little bit. Super, super simple. So all it is is chicken stock, oyster sauce, a couple tablespoons of chicken stock, maybe maybe I dropped a little bit more than that, but it doesn't really matter because it reduces. A um, couple tablespoons of chicken stock, a couple tablespoons of butter, a couple tablespoons of oyster sauce. And we're gonna let that emulsify. Meanwhile, uh, let me get a you know what I forgot to do is get a shot of pouring the sauce in. Let's try and get that shot now. Come on out. You can do it, you can do it. So now that we've, we're getting starting to get sort of creamy and emulsified, noodles, greens back in. Give it all a good toss. Let me quickly grab some scallions for garnish. Let's use our bunny mole. Okay. So we're looking for this to get sort of creamy, but not, it's, it's a little bit too watery right now. I'm just gonna let this reduce a tiny bit because we want it to really sort of sauce the noodles. We want the noodles to, to cling to it. Um, and it's okay if it looks a little bit more wet in the pan um, than it, it's gonna end up eventually being because as the noodles cool down and as they sit in the bowl, they will sort of the sauce will thicken up a little bit and the, and the noodles will absorb more. So as long as there's no like wet sauce, that looks perfect. As long as there's no like real wet sauce um, that's like kind of watery and pooling in the bottom of the wok, we're good to go. All right, noodles in our bowl. And then let's get our greens around the sides. Tuck them in there. All right. Nice side, let's tuck it in so it looks pretty nice. Okay. Get some 
chopsticks for this. I think we'll use these black guys. All right, and now we're gonna go over to the other room where I have my actual sort of beauty shot setup going on. Wasn't that easy though? All right, so over here, the dining room, um, this is where I take all my photos. Um, so nice diffuse natural light. Um, these are sort of fake um, tabletops. Um, I think I'll go with this guy. That I have this piece of foam core and the tabletop is exactly the same size as the foam core. So I put it down, unroll it. I'll clip it down over here. This one's got a little curl to it, but that's all right. What can I put on there? Here. All right. Let's get our noodles on. I think we'll go with a one of these guys, maybe. Now, one of the tricks um, I find when taking food photos is that. Normally putting something in the center of a um, of a placemat like this looks right visually from the eye, but when you use a camera, um, everything kind of gets foreshortened, so it's better to push it up closer to the front, and this gap will actually look um, more reasonably sized when it's um, kind of pushed up to the front like that. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing that only happens with cameras, um, but you know it is what it is. All right, so. I'm trying to keep most of the shots for this book super simple, so not a lot of styling, not a lot of like random crap on the table. Basically just, for the most part, just the dish. Now we turn off our flash. Um, I can show you how that, that whole foreshortening thing looks, what, what the difference is. So if we put our food in the middle, of the placemat like we normally would when we're serving it um, and you take a picture. Let me get this. Uh, I usually shoot on um, AV mode so where where I set the aperture and then the camera automatically adjusts the um, the time, um, the, the shutter speed. Um, I find that because that allows me to control depth of field. Um, all right and uh, we'll do a quick white balance, sorry. Um, I got these white balance cards. So the white balance basically adjusts your camera's internal processor so that it tells, um, but, you know, depending on the quality of the light, like as the, as the daylight goes down, it gets bluer and bluer, for instance. Um, so, um, oops. So uh, you, have to, you have to adjust the camera's processor to sort of to compensate for the change in light quality. Um, so I have these cards, which are all neutral colors, um, white, black, and gray. And then I, I adjust my white balance based on that. I'm sure someone's going to explain to me why it's a, I'm doing something wrong, but it works for me. So I do it. All right. So when you put it right in the middle of it, um, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll, well, I'll show, I'll show you on a live screenshot. You can see how it looks like the bowl is way far back. Whereas if you push the bowl up to the front of the placemat, when you take the picture, it actually looks a little bit more centered. Um, so I always find that interesting. Um, so what I like to do is I push it in the corner of a placemat. Um, and then I kind of get a little tighter into it. This looks a little bit dark. Um, and so I also have this piece of foam. I don't remember, maybe this came with like my Anova oven. Um, I use this as a sort of handheld reflector. I have that reflector on a tripod, but um, I use that for specific things, but you can sort of see the difference in image quality. Um, so here it is without the reflector and you can see there's gonna be 
shadows um, whereas here it is just slightly filled side by side and then if I really wanted to completely fill it in I could do something like that and then all the sort of dark areas around the bottom of the bowl fill in with light but I find when you do that it takes away some of the depth of the photo um, so I prefer to just very lightly fill in. Um, okay, so that, that was my 100 millimeter lens. I'm gonna take a couple with my 50 millimeter. I like to have options. 50 millimeter is just a wider lens. Um, this lens is a nicer lens, you know, it's whatever that means and um, it's sharper, It uh, better image quality, I don't know, whatever. Looks better, better bokeh as they call it, um, which is a term for how um, how things blur in photos, how, what the background blur in a photo looks like. If you go in camera forums, people talk about bokeh a lot. All right. Try that again. All right, so I'm gonna fill it in here. I don't know if people are interested in seeing a and hearing a camera lesson um, in their in what's normally a cooking channel, but I'm giving it to you anyway. There you go. All right, I think that looks pretty good. All right, now last I'm going to take switch back to my. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to stick on here. I'm going to do a couple of handheld shots. So for that, I'll turn the ISO up so that I can hold the camera steady. So one trick, if you're trying to get a steady shot um, in a low light, and right now I don't really need it because the light here is good, but if I were in a low light condition, like in a restaurant or something, and try to get a good steady shot, one trick I've learned, and I think my buddy Adam Kuban taught me this, is that you set it to continuous shooting mode, and then you like fire off like, you know, like seven or eight pictures. That way, at least one of them is probably going to be in focus um, because, you know, when you're in a... When you're in a low light setting and your and your shutter speed's really low, sometimes it's hard to get a nicely, nicely focused shot. All right, and finally, I'm going to take a couple of action shots. So that means shots where I, and these are sort of the trickiest to do without an actual camera person, which I never really have. I, I'm always by myself. Um, I. These are action shots, so I'm going to be, be picking up the noodles while I take a picture. Um, sometimes I do this by holding the camera like this and reaching out in front like that, um, which is really tricky. Uh, but I have a tripod here right now, so I'm going to do it um, with the tripod. Um, and the key to this is to get your focus set before... So I'm gonna. I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm gonna probably pick up the noodles and I'm gonna kind of come up to around here. So I wanna focus on the tips of those chopsticks where they are right now, okay? That way, when I go in and take a, take a little bit of noodles, let's say there, that looks good. Oops, I wanna, for this I do like to have it set on a timer so I can Really make sure I'm all set before. Let's see how that worked out. It's a nice little noodle pull. I could go a little bit shallower depth of field, so smaller, um, smaller aperture. I'm sorry, larger aperture, smaller f-stop number. a little too far behind. Very nice. All right, so 
Um, oh, I guess I should take a bite and do and say mmm or something. I, I mean, I've I made this dish a bunch of times, so I know that it tastes good. Um, but maybe for your benefit, I will double check. Hmm. Yes, it tastes good. That will be my daughter's lunch when she gets home from the zoo. All right, everyone. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me. Uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much, and stay safe. Bye-bye.